Good morning, Six Amherst. The Six Amherst began in April 2020 in the heart of the pandemic. Forming this podcast is our way of extending the community and the message of the community into the world. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Six Amherst podcast. My name is Sky Michaels, and I'm joined by my co-host, Emily Bosser. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. How are you, Sky? I'm doing great. So, Hi. Emily, we've been starting this little tradition of this one-word concept, right? And in Six Amherst, we pick a one-word intention each month. Um, so, I wanted to ask you a question this morning about a one word that describes your dream for the future. Ooh, that is a big question. One word. I would say harmony. Mm. And I'll go into it just slightly to say that harmony, my hope is that harmony can be achieved on many different levels on our planet. That's beautiful. I love that. And I think it's important, Emily, that we just you know continue this journey of focusing on feelings and one words and right. We simplify it down and it, I can see the smile on your face. You know, when we focus on these one word intentions, it just makes us happy. Truly. You know? It truly does. So, well, on that note, uh, this interview we're going to have today is someone that I look up to as a sort of the person that guided my career very early on. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Larry Kendall, uh, the author and creator of Ninja Selling, which is a coaching platform, a concept uh, of selling real estate. And I personally was influenced because I took this course way back in 2004, and it really dictated and guided me in my real estate career. Um, and Larry is someone that you, you can't not listen to him and feel like you're talking to someone that just has infinite wisdom. Emily, what, I know you had a pretty powerful connection to this interview. For you, what was one of your takeaways or what was some things that you remember from this one? Yes. You know, we are lucky enough here in Colorado that he literally lives right down the road from us. So we feel very lucky here. One of the takeaways that was important to me was when he starts talking about balancing work and life. You know, there's so many people out there that says there are, there's no such thing as balance. Well, I do actually think that Larry has gotten this right. There is a way to do balance in life, especially when you are becoming an entrepreneur. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, for me, I loved the fact that he talked about love and fear as two opposing forces that every other emotion stems from. And when you talk to real estate agents, like they're always so fearful of reaching out to people they know. And what he preached is, is communication is the best way to avoid fear in your relationships with your clients. And every agent that's listening to this over communicate, right? Communicate with value communicate with love and compassion. And when you do that, there is absolutely nothing you need to fear in reaching out to people. Oh, so well said. So let's dive into this with Larry Kendall. Larry, welcome to the Six Amherst. Sky, it's an honor to be with you. And Emily, what a beautiful way to start the meeting. Thank you. It's great. And Larry, I, my, my true belief is that almost every person on this call knows you, but I, just in case, if you don't mind, maybe give everyone a quick recap of, of who you are and sort of what your, your drive in life is. Sure, you bet. Well, um, I got into the real estate business a long time ago, um, almost 50 years ago. And not because I wanted to. I, was, I wanted to live in Colorado and, and there was a recession. I couldn't find a job. And so I thought I'd sell real estate until I could find a real job. And I found out that I, I enjoyed it. But uh, I'm an introvert. And one thing I don't like is conflict or certainly rejection. And so I had to come up with a sales system to be successful. One way to avoid rejection is to avoid uh, connecting. But that, uh, you know, uh, I've never met a successful hermit. <laughs> so um, I had to find a way to connect and be successful and at the same time not uh, be rejected or uh, uh, have any kind of controversy. So I developed a selling system that worked for me. And then I began to share it with our company. And before long, I got a phone call from Steve Murray at Real Trans and says, your company is the most productive real estate company in America in terms of transactions per associate and dollar volume per associate. And will you come to Dallas and uh, get an award and, and share your story. And I did. And, um, people came up to me and said, how, how do you do this? How do you get this level of productivity? And I said, I, I can teach you. And, 
uh, that started teaching and just selling in 1994. Incredible. That's awesome. And uh, so like, I think most realtors on this call, you know, we all know we should reach out to our sphere, right? Like the, that's sort of like, yeah, it's almost basic. But a lot of people struggle with like, what to say? Am I going to be salesy? You know, I don't want to bother people. How do you advise realtors on this call to sort of overcome the, these internal rejections that we give ourselves? If that makes sense. Yeah, that's mostly an inside job, I think. Uh, that we, uh, we, we tend to get in our own way a little bit with that. You know, the, the basic principle of ninja selling is to build relationships. And uh, uh, it's, it's a lot more fun to work with people who know you, like you, and trust you than it is to chase strangers. And so building relationships is really the key. And if you, if you look at the research on how you build relationships, we have a saying, the conversation is the relationship. In other words, it happens live. Uh, relationships are built through face-to-face, voice-to-voice. You can, I guess, maintain a relationship or uh, maintain a connection, maybe not a relationship, uh, electronically uh, or through mailings. Uh, but really, the true relationship is built around face-to-face and voice-to-voice. So uh, recognizing that, that's that's the, the first thing. Um Secondly, is that if you're if you're finding resistance or, or fear about uh, connecting face to face or voice to voice, we have a saying in, in, in Ninja that one of the things that's causing that fear, fear is the absence of love. And your reticular activating system runs on two pathways, uh, love and fear, and it cannot be on both pathways at the same time there. They're mutually exclusive. So if you somehow are resistant or afraid to pick up the phone or afraid to to uh, uh, do a real estate review, let's say, uh, it's because you're thinking of yourself and you're you're afraid. So you need to shift and, and throw what we say, throw the switch and ask yourself, how can I add value to this other person? How can I make their day? How could what if I called them and wished them happy birthday? Uh, what if I wrote them a nice note? What if, what if I uh, uh, drop by? Uh, focus on them, and your fears will go away. Kind of related to this at a deeper level, um, I would like to recommend the book a "Give and Take" by Adam Grant. Okay. Uh, many of you, if you're on the Ninja Path, are familiar with the Go Giver, and the Go Giver really is the art of giving, and give and take is the science behind it. And Adam Grant is the youngest uh, uh, professor at the at the Wharton School of Business. And what he dis- what he did his research on was why people give and and why they don't. And and really, what we're talking here is 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 giving to the relationship. How do you give value? How do you give uh, pleasure? How do you solve pain? Uh, how do you take care of your people? And and he said that basically. People have three belief systems. Uh, one group are givers, one group are takers, and one group are matchers. I'll give, but I accept something in return. What he found was overwhelmingly the most successful people are givers. And just give, take, adopt the mindset of how can I give to my people? How can I help them? How can I build this relationship? And I think your fears will subside. Yeah. That's powerful. And, and Larry, you mentioned your RAS system. It's one of the, when I read the book and it's right in the beginning of the book, it's like the one thing that captured me immediately. Can you maybe, can you maybe give us a quick explanation of the power of positive thinking and, you know, sort of the, the power of love in essence, what you're talking about right now? Yeah, you bet. This is how we are wired up uh, uh, neurologically. There's a part of our brain called the reticular formation of the reticular activating system. It's basically both a filtering device and a focusing device. So your, your, your body, your brain is, is receiving literally billions of inputs right now. And the reticular formation is designed to help you uh, focus. And so it doesn't want to deal with all that data. So it tends to filter out and, and only let in the things that are the most important. Well, what's the most important? Well, what's most important is what you program. And uh, what you focus on, we have a saying, what you focus on expands. And so when you set goals, for example, or if you have a life list, 
uh, that programs your reticular activating system to search for that. And it will search for ways to make that happen. Okay, now if you're not uh, programming it, if you're not setting goals, then it, it will be filtered out. It, you won't see it. A lot of times we talk about the law of attraction if you if you watch the movie The Secret or read the book. Um, and I, I, I believe in that. What I believe stronger though scientifically is that that opportunity was already there. You just weren't seeing it. But once you program your mind, program your reticular activating system, you see it. Okay. And, and that's how it works. And unfortunately, it runs on, on two pathways. It runs on things that you want or love or value. And it runs on a pathway of things that you fear or that you don't want. And if, you've, if you're constantly focusing on what you fear, you're going to see more of that. Yeah. And if you focus on what you want, you'll see more of that. Now, it's interesting. Uh, this isn't in the book, but some, some follow-up research uh, from Christine Porath at, you know, at Georgetown. Uh, uh, Dr. Porath has done a lot of research on positivity and negativity. And which do you think is more powerful, positivity or negativity? And, you know, my initial response would be, hey, I'm a positive person, but I would say positivity, but I'm going to guess actually negativity is more powerful. <laughs> Yeah, and her research, negativity is four to seven times more powerful than positivity. Okay, so, and here's another scary uh, thing. If you say something negative out loud, it magnifies it 10 times. So a negative statement out loud is 40 to 70 times more powerful than a positive thought. Now, how do we use that? Uh, one of the things that um, uh, there's a there's a sports uh, psychologist by the name of Trevor Moed, and he works with a lot of professional teams. Uh, one of the teams he works with is the University of Alabama, who's a pretty successful uh, team. He said, you know, there are some people that resist uh, positive mental attitude, positive thinking. He said, that's OK. Let's just make a deal, though, uh, that we're going to eliminate negative comments, whether it's in the huddle, in the locker room, on the field. Uh, that doesn't mean we're going to ignore mistakes, we're going to, but we're going to reframe them. You know, how can we do this better? Or what can we do to improve? Or let's try this. And, and we're, we're going to eliminate negativity. And we have adopted that philosophy in our team here at Ninja and in my home and in our family is if there's something negative, let's don't state it, let's state it, let's reframe it in the positive. And I think that's, you know, that's a pretty good philosophy to have. Yeah. And Larry, I think the power there too, as realtors, like we're surrounded by the potential for negativity all day, every day. Inspections, yes. lost deals, closings that don't happen, mortgages that get denied. And I think the, the power of that statement and that philosophy, Larry, is so so relevant for realtors, especially because of the fact all we deal with all day is the potential for negative things. And if we reframe it, how powerful it would be if all every person on this call committed to reframing anything that could be negative to the positive. Right? Yes. And we'll see all these like... Now let's reframe it in the solution versus uh, in the problem. Amazing. Amazing. I love that. And, and to relate that to maybe attracting clients too, like because I think that's a proper piece of the book. So maybe go into the ninja way how this relates into attracting business. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, what you focus on expands. And if you're looking for uh, the business, uh, your reticular activating system uh, will open up and, and begin to do a scan, do a search, you'll discover it. Um, one other thing I, I maybe, uh, Sky, that you reminded me of that I'd share that's not in the book yeah. uh, is uh, something called the law of precession. And the law of precession uh, was, uh, coined by uh, Buckminster Fuller. And the, that law basically says this, bodies in motion operate on each other at 90 degree angles. So if you think about a pebble that's dropped into a pool of water, the energy goes from vertical to when it hits the water, the concentric rings go out, it goes to yeah. uh, uh, horizontal. So the, the energy is at a 90 degree uh, angle. Well, when you're in motion, and you're moving from point A to point B, pay attention because there's probably opportunity for you at a 90 degree angle. Mm. 
Now I'll, I'll share a, a, a story if that's okay of, of a personal story of how this works. So um, I'm going to a development meeting uh, for a project that I don't think will get approved by the city. And I'm kind of whining a little bit to my assistant. I, you know, this project's never, go- it's dead on arrival. It's never going to get approved. She says, well, then why are you going? And I said, well, I'm not going for the meeting. I'm going for the people who are at the meeting. Yeah. I'm going for the processional effects. So I sit down next to an architect by the name of Bill Brenner. And I ask a ninja question. Hey, Bill, how's business? And he says, man, we are really busy. Uh, now, a lot of people would say, well, if you think you're busy, let me tell you how busy I am. <laughs> or I'm busy, too. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, I said, tell me more about that. And he says, well, we've got this project and that project. Two of them were residential projects. And I said, well, who's marketing those? He says, you know, the last meeting I was at, there was nobody there for marketing. Long story short, we listed those two new home projects. Okay. He later told me that he had just hired two new architects. I said, have they found housing? One of them had, but the other one hadn't. I helped him find a home. He said, you know, Larry, as uh, do you do commercial? And I said, yes. He said, well, we've outgrown our space. We need more square footage. And I said, uh, what are you looking for? And he told me, and I said, well, Bill, if you could wave your magic wand and have an office anywhere, where would that be? And he got this dreamy look in his eye and he said, I would own an entire floor of the savings building. Now the savings building is the tallest building in our, in our city. And he's the architect. It's his, one of his signature works. And I said, well, Bill, I, I, I heard the eighth floor is coming on the market. He says, can you get me the information? I said, sure. So long story short, we sold Bill the eighth floor of the savings building. I went over to get the information on that building from a guy named Ron Frank, who had it listed. And I said, Ron, how's business? He says, my, my partner and I are feuding and we're going to go separate ways. And I said, well, what are you going to do with this building? He says, we're going to sell it. I said, how much do you want for it? He told me, I said, I'll take it. So I bought the 315 Canyon office building. And to kind of finish the story, Ron ended up joining our company as a commercial broker. So this one meeting turned into two subdivisions listed. An architect sold uh, sold him a home, sold the eighth floor of the savings building, and uh, uh, bought a... 315 Canyon office building and recruited commercial broker. Now, all of that happened uh, with two things. Number one, bodies in motion. If I hadn't gone to the meeting or if I'd attended the meeting via Zoom, probably none of that would have happened. If, if today I would probably email Ron Frank and say, hey, can you email me over the information on the eighth floor? Are you with me? Yep. But your body has to be in motion. Bodies in motion happen face to face, voice to voice. Okay. Gets back to your earlier comment. How do we connect? How do we, you know, get in flow? Uh, all of that. So, um, and so number one, you got to get your body in motion. Number two, you got to ask good questions and listen. Hmm. That's so powerful. And Larry, did you ask, them? I think one of the most powerful questions for every person on this call to remember is five words. Tell me more about that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What a powerful question. And it's as simple as it, because you're not saying anything other than give the floor. Just tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Oh my God. So every person should remember that those five words that'll change your career. by asking that the other thing that came to my mind too, Larry, that uh, I love this concept of the pebble and the, the 90 degrees, because I think sometimes agents get uh, sort of pigeonholed or they, they block like, oh, I just sold that person a home. Like, I'm not going to reach out to them. They just bought. But we forget that the ripples beyond that person, right? We drop the pebble and then the ripples, that person may not be buying or selling, but if we're in flow with them, what what's going to connect outside from that? And I think that that's what came to my mind as you were describing. Yeah, yeah you know, you're how, exactly right, Sky. And, and many times, uh, uh, it's the referrals that happen. And, uh, you know, that's the that's the processional effect. It isn't that they're going to buy or sell, but uh, you engage in conversation. And um, as we say, you hop on their carousel. Yeah. Uh, they they uh, carousels a merry-go-round. Everybody 
uh, has these different carousels in their lives, uh, whether it's uh, their kids or their their uh, sports group or their church group or their their friend group, whatever it is. And you just climb on their carousel and ask them, how's it going? And what's what, what are you doing for fun? You know, and out of that pops real estate. Yeah. So great. Larry, give us maybe some other, what are some other powerful questions uh, that, you know, tell me more about that. Like the most, that's the most powerful. <laughs> After that, like, what are some other great questions in your career or in, in Ninja that you've developed that you think are, you know, one, two or three questions that agents should always remember when they're dealing with clients? Well, I think the magic wand is a good one. We kind of think that that's a little kind of silly, but I learned that from a psychologist and it's, it's very powerful. It, it puts people in a state of, of pretend. And so they're much more open to responding and it also helps them uh, program their, uh, uh, their reticular activating system, you know? So uh, we always talk about the, uh, 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 the five magic questions, uh, you, you know, when you're in a real estate review or if you're, if you're at a party or, or something, you, you just ask, you know, you start out with four questions, you know, how's the family, how's business? Uh, what are you guys doing for fun? You know, what are your plans for the winter, the summer, whatever. Yeah. Uh, then that leads into, uh, tell me, uh, uh, how's the house working out for you? Or tell me about your house. Yeah. How long have you lived there? And, and then that leads into the next question, which is, uh, what are your long-term plans for that house? Mm-hmm. And what's interesting to me in asking that question, virtually every person has a plan that they've kind of thought about, you know, uh, well, we're probably good to go for the next four years or, you know, uh, uh, we, whatever their situation is. Sure. That leads to the next question, which is, well, if you could wave a magic wand and live anywhere, where would that be? And almost always they have a place that they fantasized about. Now, if you just say, you know, if you could live anywhere, where would that be? They go, oh, I, don't, I don't know. But if you could wave a magic wand, yeah. and live anywhere, where would that be? Mm, and they'll describe it. And then the next question, which is natural, is to say, well, gee, with these low interest rates, have you thought about doing something sooner rather than later? And that opens that up. So uh, those are some, I, I think, very effective questions um, that, that that work very well. I love that. And you could use the magic wand question beyond the client. So you could use that with your kids. Right. Oh, I know you're upset. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like I just thought of that with my kids, you know, the situation I was dealing with. You, oh, that was you know, uh, Sky, one, one other thing I might mention, this actually came from a compass, uh, compass agent in, uh, in Austin. I was teaching a ninja installation. She was in the class and, um, and she came up to me and she says, Larry, I, I wonder if you can help me with this. I've got an engineer who is very analytical. Uh, we have lost, we've written so many offers and lost. I, I quit keeping track after 12. And, you know, I've, I've thought about what should I just not work with him anymore? But uh, long story short, we're, we're, we're close now. We're one of the three finalists. Just got a call from the listing realtor. We're in the finals. There's, we're one of the top three offers. We're sitting at a million fifty. Um, I think for him to be the winning offer, he's going to have to go to a million one. He doesn't want to do that. Uh, he's a spreadsheet buyer. So he's an engineer. He's got these spreadsheets. He, he thinks, he thinks he knows the market. The spreadsheets are telling him million 50 is the, is the number. What can I do? What should I say? And I said to her, I says, well, you're a ninja. So you don't say anything. It's what can you ask? And she said, okay, what, what, what would you ask? And I said, well, uh, what I would ask is this. I would ask a series of sleep questions. And she says, tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, get on the phone and ask him this. If, if this home sells for a million one, and you knew that you could have bought it for a million one, and you find out later it sold for a million one, Will you be able to sleep with that? Okay. And then the contrary, uh, the opposite question is this. If you paid a million one and you got it, would you be able to sleep with that? And what what that does is it accesses his non-conscious mind. 
Yeah. Our non-conscious is processing information at 400 billion bits per second versus the conscious mind, his spreadsheet is processing at 4,000 bits per second. The non-conscious is much more powerful. So access that part and, and ask him how he feels about it. And she says, that's brilliant. And so after class, she called him. She came back in the next morning. She said, we're under contract in a million one. So cool. That's so cool. I think the other interesting thing, too, is we put the power. They feel like they're powerful as well, rather than, you know, an engineer. You tell an engineer, oh, no, this is what you should do. They're going to oh, yeah. come up with that, <laughs> the response. But instead, it's like, no, you, you have the power. To, to your decision, I think it goes yeah. back into the consultative approach that ninjas take, like the yes. system and everything along those lines. That's uh, those are, I mean, so powerful questions. And once again, I hope everyone on this call is really taking notes on just these little three simple questions. The, tell me more about that. The magic, if you could wave a magic wand, and how how would it feel? If, reframe the sleep question again, Larry, just because I I, I want to make sure I get that right. How do you? Yeah, you want to, yeah, on the sleep questions. It's two questions. You want to make sure you check both both scenarios. So um, the first scenario I, I like to use is if if you lose it, and then the second scenario is if you get it. So yeah. let me ask you this: If you're at a, you're sitting at a million fifty, and what would happen if you knew that you could go to a million one, but you didn't do it, and you found out later it sold for a million one? Yeah. Would you be okay with that? Would you be able to sleep at night over that? Good. Uh, would that cause you to lose sleep? Okay. Then the, the, the reverse of that is if you're at a million fifty and if you met, if you go to a million one and you get it, are you going to be able to sleep at night? Yeah. I love that. Great questions. So like, talk to us a little bit about um, one of the, my favorite parts of the book is the part where you get into, because I think everyone, like we've all heard people use you if you know, like, and trust, right? That's a pretty classic thing. The thing that you guys add on is flow which I think is so critical because I think every realtor, if you're, if you have a past client you have not talked to in more than three years, it's one of those funny things. Like how, how do you recommend people reestablish flow with people they haven't talked to in a long time? Cause I think this is where fear comes in, right? Like, Oh, yes. we, I'm, I'm a bad realtor. I didn't call this person on their birthday or I didn't reach out in three years or four years or 10 years or, 20 years, right? You fill in the blank. Like, how do you reestablish flow with someone who you have not connected? Because I think the fear is we don't want them to think we're calling them for sales. Like, we, we just want to reconnect. Yeah. Like, so what are your recommendations for agents? Uh, well, first of all, I would offer a couple of tips. One would be uh, to soften uh, your connection uh, with a mailing, uh, maybe uh, write them a note. Uh, you know, uh, you came into my mind today and I, we haven't talked for a while and I'm just thinking about you and thought I would check in and see how you're doing. Uh, that, that warms up then when you make that phone call. Okay. So something, uh, uh usually a personal note is good. If you have their, um, uh, their information on their birthday or their anniversary of the purchase of their home, or, uh, you know, there's a lot of good reasons that, that, that you can call, um, for those of you that have been through the Ninja installation, you'll remember this story. Uh, one of our top producers uh, by the name of Cindy Kurtz, uh, one of her rituals or uh, uh, routines was on Saturday morning, she liked to open the local newspaper, have a cup of coffee because uh, they would always publish the uh, property transfers on Saturday morning in the paper. And she would go down and she would look at uh, you know, what was selling and look for her transactions. And occasionally she would see a transaction that was done by one of, quote, her people. And she was concerned because they were in her auto flow. They're getting her mailings. And at first she got angry and then she got angry with herself. And she said, you know, I haven't reached out to them live face to face or voice to voice in probably three or four years. <clears throat> And so she made a New Year's resolution that, and, and oh, the other thing that had happened during that year was for some reason, those people had popped into her brain. They had popped into her mind and, and she didn't know why, but she didn't reach out to them. Yeah. So she made a New Year's resolution. If somebody comes into my mind, there must be a reason. I mean, this gets pretty metaphysical. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 
we always say, you know, the universe doesn't speak English, it speaks vibration. So there's some sort of vibrational thing happening. And she said, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to reach out. So January 1st, she said, she started reaching out and she would just call up and say, hi, this is Cindy Kurtz. You know, we haven't talked for a long time, but for some reason you came into my mind today. And I made a, a promise to myself that if somebody came into my mind, there must be a reason. And so I'm just reaching out to see how you're doing. How's the family? Love it. How's business? What are you guys up to? She came in to, after she had made 15 of those calls. She was making about five. No, she was making three a week. She had made 15 calls. So it was five weeks into the year. And uh, she had done uh, uh, one transaction already. She had four people on her on her um, hot list. And she said it was, it was phenomenal. She went on to have her best year ever. She was already a really high producer. And so I, I like her dialogue. You know, we haven't talked in, in a long time, but for some reason you came into my mind today. Beautiful. And I just thought I would reach out and see how you're doing. So great. That's awesome. Another, guys, if you're not writing this down, like I will be, I'm recording this for a reason, but I'm going to listen to this later. Larry, that is such a beautiful line uh, and so powerful. And uh, Larry, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about CRM. I am a sphere of influence. I've been in real estate for about 20 years. And I took Ninja in uh, as a CRS class with Mike Salvaggio. And oh, yeah. I don't know if you know Mike. And, and it was in 2004. And it changed my life and my career uh, because of the fact that it sort of put me on a path of referrals and this beauty of working with people that knew me, liked me, and trusted me. Um, but a lot of realtors are resistant to using a CRM or they're intimidated. Can you talk a little bit about like why using a CRM is important to, for agents? <laughs> and I, it's a little bit of a T-ball question because these guys hear me talk CRM all the time, but I had to ask it. So, Well, there's a couple of reasons why uh, CRMs are so important. Uh, obviously, one is Ninja's all built around relationships and you, you, can't, you can't build and maintain relationships very well without a CRM. Uh, number two, if you think about the Ninja 9, which is the core system of Ninja, how many of the Ninja 9 can you do if you don't have a CRM? <clears throat> so, for example, um, habit number three, uh, writing a note. How do you write notes effectively, easily if you, if it's, if you have to scramble uh, to get, find an address, you know, your hot list, your warm list, you know. Uh, habit number six, uh, your customer service or client service calls. Uh, scheduling real estate reviews, uh, 50 live, uh, habit number eight. So you, you can't really function. We always say that, that your CRM uh, is the, is your central nervous system of your business. And, and you need that. There's a company actually, they're headquartered in Denver called Efficiency by Design. And they did a study of a couple thousand realtors and found that those that did not have a CRM versus those that did and the ones who had a CRM made 251% more money. So powerful. So, yeah. And, you know, it was great. I was uh, eavesdropping. I got on the call a little bit early. <laughs> there were uh, a number of, uh, of uh, Compass agents, obviously, uh, talking. One of the things they were talking about was CRM. And, and, and they were talking about um, how effective your business tracker is and how that, that uh, if you load, your, load up your business, and I think you guys – that Compass have taken it to a whole new level yeah. with your technology. I mean, you just have amazing technology. And now you're bas basically be able to run your business pretty much out of your business tracker. It's incredible. And, and just one shameless plug, the other thing that the CRM is doing as well, guys, is it's artificial intelligence. It's actually telling you who in your CRM is more likely to sell than the rest based on you know, artificial intelligence algorithms and comparable sales around their neighborhood. So, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the importance of using a CRM. And in all of this conversation that we're having, it's this like this, this powerful tool that 251% more business you will do by just using this free, if you're at Compass, it's, free, it's obviously free system that we have. And it's so great. Larry, give, you mentioned um, the Ninja 9. For all the people maybe that are not familiar with that, can you maybe just quick run through what are, what are what are the nine things that you recommend? Sure, and, absolutely. And, yeah, I know and, it's a long list, but what I might do is is start by sharing uh, how did we develop the Ninja Nine? Great. Um, 
uh, first of all, it, it just kind of uh, started working for me. Uh, over a period of time, I started figuring it out, started uh, observing top producers in our office. <clears throat> what were they doing? And then for the old timers on this call, you may remember Howard Brenton. And uh, Howard Brenton had a, a, a company called Star Power, and he would go around and interview top producing realtors throughout the United States and Canada and document what they were doing. Uh, I was actually one of the, the Star Power uh, stars, and I was later invited to teach in his Star Power University. So I had a chance to meet, you know, just unbelievable uh, producers. And I began to watch what they were doing, and I noticed they had these sim similar patterns. And uh, we put it into something called the Ninja Nine. So uh, we call them the nine success habits. Five of them are daily, which will, you start your day with those. It'll take you know, usually about 30 minutes. And four of them are weekly, and it'll usually take uh, two to four hours a week. And uh, this will drive your business. So habit number one, when you wake up in the morning, do your gratitudes. Uh, I like to do, read something positive, even if it's only one page. And review your life list, your goals. Okay. That is a mindset activity. That gets your mind right. So start your day, you know, with the right mindset. That's habit number one. Habit number two, then, is to time block your day and your week. So take your to-do list and start to schedule it. Uh, there's a lot of research on this about uh, effectiveness of time blocking. Um, one of the things that we would recommend is that you not open your email or your phone first thing in the morning. Yes. Because you, you, you need this 30 minutes to stay on your agenda. You've got these five activities, five habits you have to complete. The email can wait for 30 minutes. Okay. You guys are in the 6 a.m. club. So you're up early. You don't need to be calling somebody you know, uh, first thing in the morning. So um, uh, that's number two, is uh, your time blocking your day and your week. Number three then is to write uh, two personal notes. Um, a personal note is the most powerful thing you can send to another human and it's becoming more powerful because fewer people are doing it, yep. okay? And the other thing about writing a personal note, not only does it make them feel great, how does it make you feel when you write it? Okay, it continues your positive energy state. Habit number four then is to uh, focus on your hot list. A hot list is a, is a group of people that want to buy or sell. They want to buy or sell soon. They want to buy or sell with you. And they want to buy or sell in the next 90 days. This should be your top priority every single day. And what I notice in this hot market is ninjas are not looking at their hot list once a day. They're looking at it throughout the day. Okay, and you ask two questions. Question number one, who's ready to write a contract today? Where should I be spending my time? Who's ready to go today? Okay, if nobody's ready to go today, the second question is, what's the next step for them in the process? Okay, they're a buyer, but they haven't made an appointment with a lender. Okay, so my, my job today is to get them uh, into a lender. Habit number five then is your warm list. These are people that want to buy or sell, but they may not know they want to buy or sell, but you know they want to buy or sell. And the reason you know it is because you're observing the changes that are going on in their lives. Uh, you found out uh, on Facebook that they just got engaged, or they just had a baby, or they just had the last child leave the nest, or they had an elderly parent uh, move in. There's a change that's happened, and it could affect their real estate in the next um, year. So hot list is 90 days, warm list is a year. Okay. That's a daily activity that takes about 30 minutes uh, in every morning. Uh, one of the things I love about uh, uh, what you guys are doing here is your most important hour of the day is which hour? First one. The first hour, you know, yeah. and so start your, your, your day with your, your Ninja five, then time block on your calendar, a time to do habit six through nine. Habit six is your uh, your client service calls. So you want to call all of your sellers, all of your under contract buyers, all of your active buyers, anybody that's referred you business. This is your greatest source of referrals. Keep in mind that every one of them knows four people who will move this year. That's a study based on Harris Interactive, okay? So if let's say you're making uh, 
10 client service calls, they know potentially 40 people who will be moving this year. Okay. So your clients, habit number six, your client service calls serves two purposes. Number one, to offer fabled service to your client. And number two, out of that will come uh, potentially referrals. Okay. Habit number seven is your two live real estate reviews a week, uh, either face to face or voice to voice. Habit number eight is the one that um, causes the most uh, concern in a class. It's uh, your 50 live interviews. These are not 50 sales calls. These are 50 live interviews where you're asking four questions, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, listen for change. Okay. All of your client service calls count in the 50. Your two real estate reviews count. Uh, if you uh, have an open house and five people come through, that counts. If you're at the game and you see five people, that counts. But you need to engage. And this gets back to your first question, which was how do you have more live flow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then habit number nine, and you brought it up, the importance is have a set time each week when you update your CRM. <laughs> Keep it current. Amazing. I mean, just so, so powerful. If you get into this consistency of doing this, you 251% increase in your income is not un- inconceivable. It is almost a guarantee if you get into doing this. And uh, Larry, I wanted to, Emily, I wanted to welcome you on and just see Emily as a fellow Colorado person. Are there any questions maybe that came to your mind, Emily? Yes. Hi, Larry. It's so it's so great to meet you. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado, just right down the road from you. Um, I uh, I appreciate how many um, people in real estate are actually introverts. And a lot of us act as extroverts because we have to. And I want to know, what do you do to resource yourself and stay energized as an introvert working out there in the world, making connections and building relationships? What a great question, Emily. And hey, we should get together because we're only about an hour apart. So I love uh, that. yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, at least half of the population are introverts. And yet, if you read most sales books, most sales books are written, first of all, by men. And secondly, by uh, uh, extroverts, uh, power personality people. And so I was wanting to write a book that would be for the, the 80% who are not power personalities, the 50% who are, are introverts. And, and how can we make that work? And um, I think that uh, uh, when you read the book, what you discover is there's a way to be effective without uh, putting yourself in the position of either uh, uh, being rejected or in, in any way having any kind of, of uh, conflict. And um, I think when you, when you know that, and, and here's the reason, because ninjas never put their client in the, in the position of feeling pressure. When, when somebody feels pressure, the first thing they want to do is what? Run away. Mm-hmm. What if they can't get away? You have them trapped in your car or in a house. Well, then what they do is they put up the shield. And you've been taught old school selling techniques, which is now I'm going to, quote, overcome objections. Well, nobody likes to be overcome. Okay. And or you've been taught you got to have 10 no's to have your first yes. And so you start banging on their on their protective shield. Ultimately, they they feel like they just have to say no, and they have and and you and they have to reject you or reject your proposal. So uh, it's it's a very easy uh, we we call user friendly selling system. Because of that, I think at least for me, my energy is always high. I never get down. I shouldn't say never get down. You, you will get down. Whenever I do get down, I, I go to gratitude. I think is a great uh, way to, or I go into action. Um, if you ever have uh, negative thoughts, uh, we talked about this in the installation. Uh, what happens if you're on that, that wrong pathway on your reticular activating system? How do you get off of it? Uh, gratitudes is a great way. Exercise. Uh, Physiologically, uh, it's impossible to be depressed uh, when you're when you're exercising. 
uh, hang out with positive people, read something positive. Um, but you, the most important thing is your mindset. And, and, you know, we can teach you the skills and you put those skills into action. But if you have the wrong energy, the wrong vibe, you know, you're not going to get the results. And so if you find yourself as you, as you ask, what happens if you get a little bit down or what happens if you get a little bit negative? How do you, how do you come out of that? You've got to have strategies that move you out of those negative energy spaces into the positive. With that, let's end the call with our six. It's six, Larry, and, and Emily, take it away. <laughs> okay. Larry, do not be afraid. Rapid fire six questions to you. You get to answer them as authentically as you have been this entire time. Um, I'm really excited to hear your answers. So, Larry, how would you describe your perfect day? My perfect day, uh, I wake up at five. I'm a member of the 5 a.m. club. And the first thing I do before I get out of bed is I give thanks. I do my gratitudes in bed. I want my energy to be right before my feet hit the floor. And uh, then I do a, a series. Of, I start a, a pot of coffee. I do a series of exercises, uh, calisthenics, uh, while the coffee's brewing. The coffee's done. I sit down, have a cup of coffee, and write my notes. And plan and do my uh, my uh, plan for the day, uh, my my time blocking. So basically, my perfect day is the Ninja Five in the morning, yeah. and then uh, I go about my day. So um, that's that's my perfect day. Lovely. Okay, if you could time travel to any place in any time, either in the future or in the past, where, when, when would you like to go to? I've never thought about that. That's a great question. Um, I would definitely want to time travel to the future mm -hmm. more than to the past. So, uh, but I'm not sure far, how far out I want to go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. What is one thing that you would love to master? Um, I paid my way through college playing rock and roll. I was a keyboard player. And uh, after the, the army and real estate and kids, I fell out of the habit of practicing piano. Mm -hmm. I have a piano. I'd like to get back to that. I'd like to master the piano again. Ah, oh, lovely. Well, okay. What is one book or a movie that you go back to time and time again? You know, it's interesting. And I would agree with this. Um, Inman News uh, did a survey of their Facebook readers, their 140,000 and ask what are the top 10 sales books? Mm -hmm. um, and, and interestingly, uh, out of that survey, Ninja Selling came out number one. I love and it. And what came out number two was a 76 year old book called How to Win Friends and Influence People mm -hmm. um, by Dale Carnegie. And so I would probably go back to that book or Think and Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill, The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. I, I like a lot of um, of his writing. Great. Okay, this is my favorite question. We have two more left. Who was your first childhood celebrity crush? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who would that be? Farrah Fawcett. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> okay. I love it. Charlie's Angels. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. That's a great one. Okay. Final question for you, Larry. What is the first thing you're going to do after this call? Uh, I'm going to prepare a, uh, a training that I'm doing for junior achievement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be doing that training next week. And so I, I need to prepare for that. Incredible. Love well, Larry, what, uh, I, I am filled with just energy and pot. I'm like, I, I just, I'm bursting right now. I am eternally grateful for your influence in my career. And it was just such a powerful morning. And I know we had said, Oh, maybe 30, 35 minutes. I know we've gone an hour, but I cannot thank you enough. Um, and Emily, thank you. Stacy, Tony, um, just an awesome, awesome morning. And, uh, Larry, thank you so much. Any last words for the group? No, start your morning. Uh, it's the most important hour. So stay a part of this group. Yeah. Can you imagine anything more powerful than getting with this group in the morning? <laughs> That's great. Thank I you for, I'm energized, uh, Sky. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of it. 
Thanks for listening to the 6 AMers podcast. If you liked what you heard on this episode, we would love to hear from you. So leave a comment and review, and don't forget to subscribe. For more information on our 6 AMers community, guests, book recommendations, and more, visit our website at the, the number six, A-M-E-R-S dot com, the six amers dot com. We also invite you to follow us on Instagram for a daily dose of inspiration, motivation, and fun. See you next time.